Plus, the Fresh Maker. Yes! Hey guys, welcome to a special brand new episode of The Completionist. Today on the show, I think we have the coolest guest ever. Growing up, I used to watch the Power Rangers, and here he is today in the flesh. Everyone, welcome Rocky the Red Ranger to the show. Steve Cardenas, what's up, man? Hey, man, how are you? Thanks for having me. Dude, this is awesome. thanks for being here. I'm trying to just be cool and mellow. <laughs> it's all right, man. Don't yeah. worry. We'll get through this, man. It's okay. <laughs> so, Steve, you've been traveling all around the world, going to conventions, meeting fans, making dreams come true for so many people out there. Do you have time to just sit down and play games just for you? Well, actually, I've never really been much of a gamer, you know, but ever since I started doing these cons and I've started seeing all these different genres and stuff, um, I've started to get a little more into it, so now I'm starting to kind of dabble a little bit, and now I'm ready to try our game and see how I fare. Sweet. So we're going to we're going way back. I think this game came, when did the movie come out? 93, 94? The movie came out in 95. 95. So that's when the game came out. So we're going all the way back to 95 today, and hopefully you and I together can, can take down... Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie, the game. I'm just going to get this off my chest for just one second. Bear with me for one moment, I'm sorry. Freaking the Red Ranger is on the completionist! Whoa, 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 Gerard, calm down, it's okay. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm good. I'm good, just... Holy sh**. Okay. Okay, we're good. We're good. Professional. Professional. In case you didn't know, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers were everywhere in the early 90s. They had their own toys, comic books, clothes, and even lunchboxes. And you know you've made it when you're on a damn lunchbox. One day, Mom. One day. With all of that sweet, sweet merchandising and the incredible success of their TV show, it came as no surprise to anyone when the Power Rangers were featured in their first big-budget blockbuster movie. Released in June of 1995, the film would go on to make over $65 million at the box office, earning its place in the Power Rangers mythos and the hearts of the fans. But the merchandising machine wasn't done yet. You can't just make a Power Rangers movie and leave it at that. Which is why, on the very same day as the release of the movie, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Movie The Video Game was also released for Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. This wasn't the first Power Rangers video game on the Super Nintendo either. One year earlier, a game simply titled Mighty Morphin Power Rangers hit home consoles and was unfortunately met with some pretty mixed reviews. Many claimed that it was just too mediocre with its boring repetitive gameplay, subpar animation, and bland level design. So when the movie-based game was set to release, it had a lot of weight on its shoulders. This made Power Rangers the movie, the game, more than just an unofficial sequel. It was the chance for the Power Rangers franchise to rectify its past sins of the Super NES. It was the last opportunity to make things right by delivering the Power Rangers game that we all deserve. Now, before we find out if the game accomplished all that it could, I've got to make this clear. I was a huge Power Rangers fan as a kid. I would dress up in my Ranger costume on days that weren't even Halloween and pretend that I was one of them. I wanted nothing more than to be able to join up with the crew and battle the forces of evil. 
I obviously never got my wish, but I feel like this game is a neat opportunity to relive some of those old fantasies. It's going to be a trip down memory lane, and who knows? With Steve here, I might actually make my lifelong dream come true. Right, Steve? Well, you never know. What's my ranger color, Steve? What color would I be? Come on. Uh, I don't... Ooh, ooh, what weapon do I get to use? Gerard, I really don't have any idea what... What kind of prehistoric creature do I get to drive around in, huh? Come on. Anything. Anything but the frog. <laughs> the story of the mighty Morphin Power Rangers follows the adventures of six teenagers who are granted tremendous superpowers by an ancient intergalactic being known as Zordon. With their ability to multiply their strength by morphing and the power to summon giant mechanical creatures known as Zords to fight by their side, the Power Rangers protect their hometown of Angel Grove from the frequent attacks of the nefarious space witch Rita Repulsa and the mighty space swollen enemy known as Lord Zed. Look, that guy is swole and he's veiny and he just creeps me out. This essentially is the plot of the first two or three seasons of the Power Rangers. However, with every TV show comes a movie. At least if they're good shows. The plot of the movie sees the Power Rangers battling the powerful wizard Ivan Ooze after he's freed from his prison beneath the Earth. Ooze manages to destroy the Rangers' source of power, stripping them of all their abilities and weapons, and forcing them to search the cosmos for another source of strength before Ooze takes over the planet. Now this should have been an easy freebie for the creators of this game, right? I mean, all they had to do was emulate the plot of the movie to create their game's story. But inexplicably, the game foregoes retelling the movie's plot and instead decides to not really have a narrative of any kind. There's no opening cutscene, no scrolling wall of text, no nothing. The game just throws you into its first stage, pats you on the ass, and sends you on your merry way. There's really no framing for the game's events at all. There's seemingly no link between any of the game's levels or locales, and none of them seem to draw any inspiration from the movie at all. There are plenty of references to the TV show throughout, but it's not like any levels are retelling any of the show's plots. This utter lack of narrative isn't upsetting or anything, it's just utterly baffling. When you have such a readily available source of story, why choose to ignore it? At the end of the day, this game feels less like a movie and more like an average day in the life of the Power Rangers. It would have been nice to have some sort of story to drive the action forward, but ultimately, the gameplay functions fine without it. But since there's no plot at all, the game ends up feeling almost like a giant training simulation for the Power Rangers. You know, that actually wouldn't be a bad idea for the story of this game. It wouldn't be that hard to implement either. Just a single splash page explaining that Zoran wants the kids to train a bit. So he's setting them up in some sort of giant holodeck within the command center that will allow them to face back similes of enemies from their past. God, what I wouldn't have given to be trained by the Zordon. I would drop my life in a heartbeat if I got a call from Zordon. I think anyone would. In some ways, Power Rangers the movie the game succeeds at making the player feel like a genuine Power Ranger. But in other ways, the game drops the ball left and right at presenting an authentic Power Rangers experience. For example, the game does a great job at representing all six Rangers when they're not morphed. They each adequately resemble their real-life counterparts and come equipped with varied and unique basic movesets and designs. But on the other hand, when the characters are morphed, they all appear to be the same color-swapped versions of the Red Ranger. With the exception of the White Ranger, all their basic attacks and sprites are identical. Only one of the Rangers is supposed to have a Tyrannosaurus helmet. And the palette swap situation makes the female Rangers look a little more on the masculine side. The overall visuals may be expressive and vibrant, but the backgrounds don't evoke Power Rangers nearly enough. You may start the game in Angel Grove, but you soon you end up in random places like aircraft carriers, moving trains, snow-covered mountains. These areas are plenty diverse, they look great, and they'd even be welcome in most other brawlers. But in a game based on the Power Rangers, they'd be much better off if they were replaced by actual locations from the franchise. The music is exactly what you'd expect from a Super Nintendo classic, funky as hell, every track is thumping and awesome thanks to the good old Super Nintendo sound card, but unfortunately renditions of the classic Power Rangers tunes are disappointingly absent. No Go Go Power Rangers, no White Ranger Tiger Power, outside of the little teaser video that plays while idling on the main menu, and the small jingle at the very end and beginning of the game, the themes just aren't present. That being said, the soundtrack still rocks and is undoubtedly one of the best aspects of the whole game. Power Rangers the movie's presentation is good, but not great. 
It's like a student who's satisfied with getting C's. The game never puts in an effort to faithfully recreate the details that would make this an exceptional Power Rangers experience. With that being said, you and a friend do get to tear through an army of putties while doing martial arts and morphing. And that counts for something. Once a ranger, always a ranger. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Movie The Game is a classic brawler through and through. It's all about moving from one end of the level to the other while beating the crap out of any enemies in your way, or in this case, buddies. There's all kinds of screens to be had within this game. You've got your classic auto-scrollers, your locked arena screens, your freeform screens in which you can move about however you please, and even your obligatory boarding stage. Ah. They don't make them like this anymore. The game features a few platforming elements here and there, such as dodging quick moving stage hazards and jumping over pitfalls. But one of the coolest performing aspects of this game is the character's ability to leap between two planes during gameplay. Sometimes you can leap between the foreground and the background, while other times you're able to jump from the ground to a higher platform. Switching planes this way lets you explore the levels with just a little more freedom, provides a reliable way of avoiding damage, and sometimes is the only way to reach certain enemies enemies and items. It's a pretty cool element that sets this Power Rangers movie game apart from a lot of other brawlers. But since fighting is what this game is all about, each ranger comes equipped with a set of basic attacks to fend off the legions of buddies who are after them. Every ranger has a standard attack, a jumping attack, a crouching kick, and even an uppercut. They've also got a nice backflip to help avoid damage. While these attacks are pretty universal in their applications, the animations are different between each ranger and reflect a little bit of their user's personality and character. But things get really cool when you have access to their special moves, which can only be performed at the cost of some of your power meter. These moves are unique to each ranger, and they have their own strengths and weaknesses. Tommy delivers a killer roundhouse kick, Kimberly performs an overhead kick that looks like Chun Li's Hazanchu, Aisha slams down on the opposition with her booty, Adam throws a goddamn Hadouken, Billy casually chucks some bombs out of his pockets, and Rocky executes the perfect Bruce Lee flying kick. Badass! In order to fill up your power meter, you'll need to collect power icons, which are dropped by defeated enemies. These icons come in two varieties, large and small, which yield the corresponding amount of meter when picked up. If you forego using your character's special move and manage to fill your power meter entirely, then you can full-on morph into a Power Ranger. Now you're playing with power. That's a different, a different, that's not the right reference. When you morph, you'll instantly refill your life bar, clear the screen of any basic enemies, and your attacks will even now do double damage. But that's not even the final form. If you manage to fill your power meter yet again while already morphed, you'll actually become an even more powerful version of your selected ranger. Your basic attack will be replaced by an attack that uses your ranger's signature weapon, which has much more range. This mode won't last forever though, since your power meter will drain over time. But not only that, you can also execute your character's super move which delivers massive damage to everything on screen at the cost of your entire power meter. Sometimes you just gotta make the world burn. Although you'll be mainly fighting putties throughout your adventure, they do come in a bunch of varieties. Some crawl, some leap through the air, some shoot AK-47s? That's a little hardcore, don't you think? All right, these putties right here have had enough, clearly. But despite their impressive hardware, the putties don't have a complete monopoly on the enemy status in this game. You also got robots and ninjas to deal with. Yeah, they're a bit generic. So what? That last putty had an AK-47. You guys remember that time that the Power Rangers fought a battalion of putties and they all were armed to the teeth? No? Because it never happened. Then there are the bosses, which for the most part actually come from the Power Rangers TV show. While the game's many mid-bosses are just nondescript machines and automatons, the stage's final bosses really help emphasize the fact that you're playing a Power Rangers game. These dudes really act like classic brawler bosses too, complete with predictable patterns and multicolored life bars. But I'm really glad they're around. It makes me feel nostalgic about the show. The gameplay in Power Rangers the movie is undeniably fun, and if you've ever played a brawler before, then you know exactly what to expect from it. Things can get a bit repetitive at times, but the level and enemy designs change often enough to keep things from getting too stale. The complete lack of any Zord gameplay is in fact a real bummer, but if you've got a great buddy to play with, then this game can still be an awesome time. After all, being a Power Ranger is about teamwork, right Steve? You got that right, man. So, does it sound like I have what it takes to be the next Power Ranger? Gerard, your heart's in the right place, but... Mark, go to final level, go to final level, change the section, change the section! <laughs> A 
As soon as you reach the final stage, you're immediately thrown into a fight with Ivan Ooze, the game's only actual link to the Power Rangers movie. That's right, no final climactic level, no boss rush right before the last fight, just you and Mr. Purpleface. Ooze has had enough of your crap and he wants to put an end to it right now. He can be a bit annoying to fight since he'll often jump back to avoid your attacks and because he spends so much time in the air and out of your reach. But when he is within reach, you'll have no problem doing damage to him. After taking a few hits, he tends to summon some spikes right to his side, so be careful about going ham, unless you're John Ham. Other than that, Ooze will spend most of his time throwing crap at you from a distance. He's got oscillating fireballs, twin flaming blades, teleporting metal teeth, and even a ground slam attack that spawns two energy waves. Ivan Ooze is a a-hole. This fight is all about avoiding his barrage of projectiles and landing good damage when you can. If you manage to do so, you'll stomp Ooze's face with ease. But you're not quite out of the fire yet. You've got 99 seconds to escape Ivan Ooze's fortress before it self-destructs with you inside. Of course, there are hazards and enemies everywhere to get in your way. Eventually, you'll get to a wall that can't be broken through, and you'll have to fight off wave after wave of putties. But just in the last second, a giant hand from the Ninja Megazord crashes through the wall and pulls you to safety. Then you and your whole Power Ranger crew celebrate as you watch Ooze's secret mountain base go up in flames. As a nice little epilogue, we're treated to a brief scene of Rocky and Tommy sparring in the ring, with the rest of the Rangers and an entire crowd of fans cheering them on. Better late than never, Bulk and Skull jump into the ring and proceed to get royally messed up by the boxing duo. That's kind of harsh. Like, it just seems out of character for the Rangers to physically beat up a couple of comedic knuckleheads for really no reason. It feels like something the Rangers would never do, like fighting against the cops or the military. Wait a minute, that's what this game was. You board a military aircraft carrier and you tear it to pieces. You sabotage an industrial train. You infiltrate a military installation and beat up a tank that's clearly marked UN. What's going on here? Are the Power Rangers just these big international bullies? You wanted to know what it was like to be a Power Ranger. Sometimes it's about making the hard decisions. I... I don't know if I want to be a Ranger anymore, Steve. Once a Ranger. <sighs> Always a Ranger. don't really get anything for beating the game on normal mode. However, in the options menu, there is a hard mode function. And if you beat the game on that, you'll then be given a cheat code that you can then input to play the entire game as a fully morphed Power Ranger the entire time. No power icons needed. At the main menu screen, input up, down, left, right, X, B, Y, and then A. Booyah, you're a badass from here on out. You don't need to beat the game on hard mode in order for this code to work, so if you want to roll through the game flexing on fools, then by all means, use the code. You're welcome. Power Rangers the movie the game isn't difficult at all. No bones about it, it's a brawler that doesn't ask much of its players. You might get caught by some random damage here or there, and you might even lose a life or two along the way. But once you get used to the rules of the game, nothing can really stop you. Which makes sense because nothing can stop the f Power Rangers. The power is in the name, guys, come on. Given that your move pool isn't the biggest and that your character actually loses a lot of its individuality when they morph, there isn't much depth to be found in the game. It's more the type of title to sit down and beat with a friend in an afternoon, and if you're a fan of the classic Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, then there's definitely something here for you to enjoy. So uh, now that we're done with this review, can I be a ranger yet? No. Can I get a high five? Sure. Yeah! Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Movie is a great beat-em-up that's short, fun, and a good time. If you're a Power Rangers fan like myself, you're going to get a little bit nostalgic going down memory lane with this game. Yeah, it's true. I got a little nostalgic myself sitting there playing it, and it's just weird to play yourself on a game. You know, <laughs> very interesting. I can't imagine. That's incredible. There's no completion bonus, but for it being a short game, there's no need for one. All in all, the game doesn't have too much substance, but it's still a good time regardless. So, with that in mind, guys, we give this game our completionist rating of Complete It. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button right there. And hey, while you're at it, 
head over to Super Beer Bros right now as Alex and I just got to interview Steve Cardenas and Jason Font while they played the game you all just saw. We also got to interview them about their time as Power Rangers as well as some other voice acting gigs they've done. Good stuff all around. And if you missed last week's episode on Street Fighter, give it a click right here. Go, go, Power Rangers. That's all the time we've got for today, guys. So please, as always, let us know what you thought about today's episode somewhere on the internet. Steve, thanks for being here, man. Thank you, brother. This was so much fun. A lot of fun, yeah. Yeah, is there anything you want to plug before you head out today? Um, sure, yeah. Actually, guys, if you haven't done it already yet, you definitely need to go ahead and download the Battle Battalions game. We got Jason Fawn on there, myself, Aaron K. Hill, Blake Foster, Catherine Sutherland. We're all voicing this game, and it's a lot of fun. It's uh, free to download, free to play for your PC, and uh, it's just a fun little experience, and we're going to find out a little bit more about that right now. So, yeah, go over to Super Beer Bros right now. We did a huge video with... Uh, it was Steve, Jason Fonten, myself, and Alex. We, we played both the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the game and a little bit of Battle Battalion. Uh, Total Biscuit from YouTube actually uh, voices the main narrator in that game too. So that's kind of a fun little YouTube kind of Power Rangers mashup thing mm -hmm. right there. Yep. Uh, in fact, now if you excuse us, let's take a clip at the Super Beer Bros playthrough right now. It's time for me to oh, morph. morph. It's, it's, it's morph. morph. Okay. I forgot how to morph. X. There it is, yeah, it's there you go! go. <laughs> time for <laughs> Time for Time Force! <laughs> yeah, mother truckers, here we go. Mm. Oh wait, I'm, I'm hitting the wrong person. So if you Get ever- Get that lightning bolt. There you go, oh. Uh, press, press down and Y. Oh, down and Y. There you go, your little kicks. Oh, you got a little kick there, there we go. go. Oh, you got some burger right. in you, you're good. Oh. Oh, look at that, dude. Look at that. It's super powerful now. I feel good Man. about the front punch. Oh. oh, I gotta jump. I gotta jump. I gotta jump next time. That guy up there, he does not give a shit. The Power Rangers. <laughs> it's like aliens attacking, there's yeah. chaos everywhere. And he's like, I got my skateboard. I'm good. I'm ready to rock and roll. 